Hey everyone, welcome back to Unicorn Dust Designs. Today we are going to be making a DIY wood round. These are very easy, it's very inexpensive, especially for somebody that is starting out um, with wood signs. They look very intimidating because they're a little bit bigger, um, but I'm going to walk you through the process. I happen to be working on two signs at the same time, so I figured repetitiveness um, might be better for some of you that are just watching for the first time or that need that second look at something. Um, if you don't need that, then just fast forward through those parts. Um, I did not show you the outcome of the brown stained sign. So to do that, go log on to my Facebook business page at Unicorn Dust Designs and I will post what I ended up doing with that sign. So with that said, let's go ahead and get going. All right, you guys, let's get started. So something I didn't show you guys before I started this was I did sand them. Also make sure to sand the edges of this. It comes super, super rough and you want those edges very smooth. So make sure to do that. Here I'm using Wistolium wood stain in golden pecan and I use a micro fiber towel I just get them and cut really I mean they're pretty small squares maybe like a two by two even one by one depending on what I'm doing I find that the uh, micro fiber towel cloths whatever they are um, I feel like they hold a lot more of the stain and go a lot further I have tried rags, I've tried t-shirts, and um, I've also tried the foam brushes. That's actually what I started off with because I saw it in a YouTube video. Um, here's my perfect husband um, feeding me a snack. Anyways, um, I saw it in a video and so when I first started I was doing foam brushes, letting it set for a long time, and then I would come back, I'd wipe the excess off. But I find that this way with the microfiber towel works amazing. Um, here I'm just, now I'm going into the edges. This is where I said it needs to be smooth or else it'll just look super rough if you do not sand these edges down. And as you can see, I'm dipping my finger in and then putting it on the towel because I do not want to oversaturate it where it's going to run and then seep onto the other side of the wood round. So I'm just taking my time with it. And here you go. Because I, you know, you can dip your towel in there. I mean, it's up to you. Um, you could get microfiber towels. You could get a big pack at Menards, Home Depot. Um, you could even find them at the Dollar Tree, but you're only getting one. So I haven't really figured out if that is the best value or not. Um, then you are going to stain your back. I know there are some people who do not stain the back of their signs because um, they find that it's a waste of product when it's never going to show because it's against a wall or a door or whatever it may be. But for myself, um, I like the product to look very finished. So I go ahead and stain the front and the back. And you know, it's an extra barrier to like for the wood, especially if it's going to be a sign that's hanging outside. I rather it be double sealed. And then here is that one. And now this weathered gray, you guys, has is probably one of my most popular colors of stain, other than I would say Jacobian and yeah, I would say Jacobian and weathered gray are probably my um, most popular stains. And this one is from Verathane. And you guys, if you're just starting off, get these smaller cans um, before you get the bigger ones because then you'll kind of know which ones are going to be more popular for you which ones you're going to use more and you're not overspending when you're starting out doing these things and also keep in mind if you are not someone that's going to do this like every week or every day for a business you can create your own stain which I do have a video um, on my channel of that oh, look at that wood grain you guys that is absolutely stunning. All right, this is Hellsman. I just actually switched over to this. 
Um, I'm going to apply it with a chippy brush and um, just make sure I shake mine. It says stir, do what you do. Um, I find that shaking is perfectly fine. Um, I also use, you guys, polyacrylic, and I know that's for inside use, but I've never had an issue with it. Don't ask me why I'm smelling this. Um, I've never had an issue with polyacrylic, so to each their own. But I tried this out, and I really liked it. Um, just like polyacrylic, this does have like a watery texture to it. And this is water-based, you guys, this sealer. Um so a little bit goes a very long way and make sure if you have runs that are going on the side of your piece of wood that you get that brush and you wipe it or I don't know wipe it down I guess I don't know see how I'm doing the sides because if it runs and you let it dry like that then you're gonna have like this cloudy glob of paint right there um I say I'm um a lot, I'm sorry. And for this one, you guys, when you're doing the rounds, make sure you get every inch of that because when these dry, they, they'll they show like little streaks of where you did not get that clear coat. So now I am measuring my piece of wood because I'm going to go ahead and put the D hooks on. D hooks are what I use to hang my burlap ribbon on my sides. I find it's the easiest. Um, I feel like it gives you more leverage too on hanging for like evenness. I don't know if that makes sense. Um, these are the large D hooks. I can make sure to link them um, down below. I get them from Amazon, comes in a huge pack. Um, for these wood signs, wood rounds i am using the i think it's 17 and a half inch i get mine from home depot i find they're most the cost most cost effective there then those are menards and um, i am going three inches in on each side it's about i think like just from the line to the line not the edge um around 16 inches i believe um, and that uh, I gotta stop saying um you guys the thing I love about these wood rounds is they are panels of wood pressed and glued together so majority of them you'll see have lines already there for you to help you create an even line of where to hang them so for this one um, yeah couldn't find them some of them are a little harder to find uh, but they are there which I really like because um, unless you guys know how to get a straight line let me know because I swear I have the most difficult time finding them so these wood panels do help a lot and these do take a screw gun I've seen people use um, like wire hanging backs with screws and other things like that but these are so heavy i just feel like this is the two um d hooks are added security okay so now you guys we are going to tape this off i am doing a last name established sign both of these are going to be door hangers and again i am finding the line because again this is paneled wood so there is a line very straight line and it makes it so easy and i am just using painter's tape you can find painter's tape at any hardware store the dollar tree even has painter's tape and it works just as good the only thing is it doesn't have like the cardboard piece inside it's kind of weird but um i got mine at menards it comes in all sizes so like one inch half an inch whatever you need i have all of them and I go ahead and I follow my tape all the way around because I like to paint the edges some people don't paint the edges and that's totally fine I just feel like it gives it more of a finished look when I do that so I'm just gonna go ahead and repeat do the same thing the gray one was a lot easier I could totally see the sign or the sign, 
I could see the line and make sure you guys that tape is pressed down very good because you do not want anything going under there. So here are the decals that I'm going to use. I guess I wouldn't be called a stencil, I guess a decal. Um, I love you guys. I, okay, you guys make sure you check your decal because um, I'm definitely starting to put the wrong name on here and oh look I think I realize it like right about hey that doesn't belong on this sign yeah so make sure you double check that um, but for me I love I love the look of wood I love the look of wood grain so anytime I can make a sign that is not paint on paint then I won't do it so like for instance, this one, I could have easily chalk painted it white on the bottom and then painted the name on with gray as well. But I want to see that wood grain. I mean, that's why you're buying a wood sign, right? So I always lay my decals down first um, and I paint over them so that when you lift that decal up, you are going to see the beautiful wood grain on the bottom instead of just a stark gray font, you know? So here I am just peeling this off. And you guys, I get my contact paper from Dollar Tree. Works amazing. Perfectly fine. Love it. Um, I also use a couple other ones um there's some i get at walmart offline just preference here so i'm using rust-oleum chalk paint and i am using a mini roller i find that this gives me the most even um paint base if somebody wanted a sign that was more rustic i would use like a chippy brush and go over it but they want this very clean and classy so I go over it with a foam brush. And here I go, I'm gonna get those sides, making sure not to press too hard because I don't want that chalk paint to run over to the back of it. And make sure with this, you guys, you are getting nice, soft, even coats. You do not have to press hard on your roller to disperse color. So you see right there, and now, I'm gonna go let it dry and we are back you guys we are back don't mind the brown sign <laughs> I ended up trying to go back and uh, make another decal because I made it too big and you guys I don't know what was up with that sign but it gave me so many issues so here we are and we are doing the second coat and again light even coats and make sure your chalk paint is all the way dry you guys if you try to go over wet chalk paint it's just going to pick that previous layer back up and it's going to look splotchy and no bueno um and if you guys are impatient like me then get a blow dryer out and dry it and it works amazing i have a blow dryer over here and i have a heat gun at my craft table and uh, I am so glad I watch YouTube because I would have never figured that out ever. So here's my little one. He's the only one that comes down here. My daughter's like, nope, I'm going to stay upstairs all day, which is fine. Okay, now we are going to take our decal off. This is thoroughly dry. This one I actually even dried with the hair dryer. And we are just taking this off. And you see, you guys, how you can see the wood under it? Like, I love that. Ooh. Sometimes this is relaxing for people. Is it relaxing for you? <laughs> I'm all looking at it and I'm like, oh, this kind of is relaxing. Um, make sure you guys, when you are using your weeding tool, not to push so hard underneath that vinyl when you're trying to pick it up because it will leave grooves in the wood. Um, you can take some of the paint off as well. So just make sure you're being careful. Get those corners of them. And just so you know, I did use um, 651 vinyl. I feel like this is the best for me. I feel like it really sticks to the wood so that 
paint doesn't seep under it. And here you guys go, and I'll show you the gray. Those turned out great. See how you could see that wood grain underneath the gray? Perfect. Okay, now we're back to the workstation. Our paint is thoroughly dry. I am dusting off all of the chalk paint, and we are gonna go back over this. So in the beginning of this video, we did the back because I screw on the D hooks before I paint. So that's why I do the back first. Now everything's dry. We've dusted off all of like the chalk paint that may have fallen off. And I am going over this and I am putting on another coat. You guys can follow the one to three coats. I usually do one to two coats depending on what I'm doing and how, I guess, um, you could say it's going to be outside so like is it going to be directly outside is it going to be like inside a storm door um i take those factors into play when creating signs you guys i do not know why this clip is in slow-mo so i apologize now um but it works great it dries it doesn't dry as fast as polyacrylic but i also took a blow dryer to these as well and dried them and I'm making sure again to get those sides because if you let them dry with those drips on it you are going to have like cloudy hard like bubbled up edges and you don't want that and then you're going to have to sand it down and then it doesn't match and so you guys take your time and do it right the first time and make sure to dust that chippy brush off I cannot stand when those dang things shed Oh my gosh, I don't know why this is in slow-mo. It should have been sped up. So hopefully you guys don't have to watch this for much longer. But you guys can hear me babble. I don't know how to do music yet. Um, and my voice. So we'll have to figure that out. Oh my gosh, what is happening? It's like, here is my sign. Just kidding. And like I said, um, I noticed that there was a streak here where there was no um, Hellsman on there. So I went back over it because again, when this dries, if there is a piece you didn't get, you will definitely notice it. And the thing with Hellsman, you guys, it only comes in like a satin or glossy. What I like about polyacrylic is you can get matte with that and husband doesn't come in matte or at least i can't find it in matte okay come on you get it okay now is it back to normal okay you guys i'm sorry i'm horrible at this I didn't record me doing any of the flowers. I didn't even record me gluing it on. So if you guys want to see that, I could do another video on how I do my florals, how I do my bows. Um, I can do, gosh, I could do a lot of bows and a lot of florals. So let me know and I can definitely do a video on that. So these are my D hooks. You guys, this ribbon I get at the Dollar Tree. And it is so, I don't want to say thick, but it is so strong. Um, I cut them into 22 inch in length. I am using this, it's just like a cardboard piece or paper, or whatever. I put this under because I need to put my hot glue on here and then I press it down and I don't obviously want the hot glue getting on the back of my sign. So I use that as a layer of protection. And here I go, I'm rubbing my, that's my hot glue gun color pencil thing. There's so much hot glue on there at this point. <coughs> my watch is telling me to breathe and I'm like, I do not have a minute to breathe right now. Just back off, you know, smartwatch is telling you what to do and all. Um, so now I'm just waiting till it dries. It'll harden up. You guys, this stuff, it, it will not go anywhere. 
Um, this Dollar Tree ribbon, it comes in polka dot, chevron print. They have plain like burlap, everything. So um, the customer, since she was going with more of a simple look with her greenery and her bow, we decided that the chevron print was going to add just the right touch to this sign. And it did. It looks so cute hanging up. I love it. So there it is. Sorry, it's a weird angle, but you will see a picture of it at the end. Um, so what am I doing here? Who knows? See, I don't even know what I'm doing in the video. Um, I think I'm going to go ahead and put this. Okay, so this, you guys, is... I think it's baby lamp here. I got some right here. It is from Walmart. It is mainstay and it is their eucalyptus, but it's like a mini eucalyptus because they have a couple of them there. They have bigger and they have smaller. This burlap ribbon I'm using was also from Walmart and they come in all different colors. And right now I already created the middle of the bow, but what I'm doing right here is taking the bow, taking the greenery, and then I'm gonna use the middle part of the bow to attach everything together. That way I'm not having to glue my greenery down, then glue the bow down, because I find when you do that, it does not cover the stems of the greenery as well as I would like and I feel like it's harder to glue down greenery like it pops up you have to hold it down forever um, here I'm just going to glue everything together that way when I'm ready to put that on the sign I'm going to put E6000 all over the back along with a little hot glue and it's on there and it's done I don't have to do a glue and then a glue and then a glue. So here I am just getting them. And you guys, I don't know if anybody else has this issue, but sometimes when I glue greenery or flowers directly on, the little like plastic pieces start to melt off and it kind of falls apart. So I don't know if that's just me or my hot gun's too hot, but yeah, that's my problem. And you guys, I did not record the brown one because that one took a very long time i did not think you guys wanted to hang around for that it was um a floral sign with custom flowers and all that stuff so if you do want to see that please go to my um facebook page it is unicorn dust designs and i will be posting it there and I don't even think I show you guys my bow. I'm like admiring it. Like, yeah, this looks awesome. I did great. And uh, you guys aren't going to see it. Okay. So no, need more hot glue. And you guys with this burlap. So, you know, you can't just like hold it down. I always use that, the pencil you've seen me use to kind of um, smush it down, I guess, so that it gets in all of the little crevices because it is hard to just, like if you put glue and you just put it over, it's not gonna stay, it's gonna pop right back up. So as you can see, I'm using my pencil to hold that down and make sure the glue is spreading out here. And you guys, if you don't have E6000, you better go to Walmart and pick yourself up some. Um, I had never used it before, started watching YouTube videos, of course, pick that up. And when you are putting something like this on a sign, E6000 is like concrete. Like it is not going to budge. It is not going to fall off over time. Like it is legit there to stay forever. And especially if you're putting a sign outside, it's going to be worth it. So here's the finished project. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope you guys subscribe and give me the thumbs up button. And I hope this helped you guys. Have a good one and I will be talking to you soon.